Ladies and gentlemen, please indulge me for a few minutes and take out your identity card for one minute. Your identity card. Not your badge, and hold it up. Your identity card. Just a few minutes. And when you have done that, could you do me a favor and put the card down in front of you and be identity less for one moment? Be identity less for one moment. You know, 1.5 billion people do not have an identity. They don't have, therefore, dignity. And if, if you think about it, what were the privileges? that that card got you for one minute. It brought, brought you dignity. That's one side of the conversation to have today. But the other side of the conversation will be threefold. One is, who do you trust? What method do you trust? And, ladies and gentlemen, are you in control. Are you in control? The fact is, our identities are being shaped in many ways. They're being de deconstructed in many fashions. And technologies are part of the shapers of that narrative. You may have different types of identities. But are you in control? doesn't take us too often and not too far in the past to look at what abuses have occurred when, ladies and gentlemen, we are not in control. Think about that punch card that was made. It was the Hollerith tabulator. And it was very interesting because it was a precursor of what became IBM. Can you listen to the music? And we know what happened. That music was evil. That was an evil music. And we know that what happened was, it was used not only as a census to locate where people were in Nazi Germany, but by what religion and by what ethnicity. And that was no longer a beautiful music anymore. It became left, right, death. Left, right, death. That's not too far in our past, ladies and gentlemen. And the stakes are even higher today. Are we really, really in that control? Especially with the movements of technologies that are occurring around us. And the identities, the many identities we have. We know that we're not too far off from left, right, and death. The music of evil. And yet, we have many persona. We have many identities. We have online identities. We have digital types of identities. And they formulate, if you will, some sort of profile about us. What do I want to serve you? What kind of buying habits do you have? How can I make money off of your identity? How can I actually go further with your identity? And maybe we may think about whether or not we are truly, truly in control. This is happening today. And we simply are not looking at all of the components that form us in terms of those digital personas. We are now industrial walking cyborgs. We have embedded technology in us. We have become intra-types of robots 
the ones that perhaps Manfred may have described. We have blurred the boundaries of our reality. I may wear something that is augmented. My realities and my identities become so blurred. And guess what? I can tag you. I can tag you in the streets with my very nice glasses. I can tell you when I met you. And I can tell you where you live. And you can tag me. It's no longer something that you have in social media. It's today. I tag, you tag, we tag together. Are we in control? Are we in control? And you may ask, but of course, Monique, I have many identities. Of course, I have a private identity, a professional identity, and maybe some portion, if you will, of an online identities that I choose to share. But are we truly in control? Tick, tock, left, right. Well, yes, the one thing that forms me is my DNA. Is it true? It's me, I'm root. I have me in front of you. But are we in control? This particular example is used in the Midlands, in the United Kingdom. And it was given uh, where there were children, teenagers who spat on bus drivers. Not exactly social behavior, <laughs> acceptable. But um, what was decided upon was to take the spit and use a DNA kit to predict your child's antisocial behavior. It's today. It is where these crossroads are. Are you in control? Could I imagine taking a step further with my DNA and perhaps creating the smart child? Perhaps looking at how I want to have a super race, tick-tock, tick-tock. And now we are wondering what is happening with our humanity. Or could I take that DNA, I have data that suggests that maybe you are subject to a particular disease and I can leak it and will leak it to a particular company. Maybe your future employer. Are you in control? Yes, this is something that defines us. And you may say we have laws against it. The abuse, but the central abuse is always there. The potential of abuse we have seen from history. Tick, tock, left, right, death. Could I, for example, say with a portion of DNA to suggest that you're broken, therefore you should die? Tick, tock, you're dead. So while we may suggest that our DNA is something very unique to us, it is the crossword rose here that I may suggest that we really probably need to pay close attention. So, what are the trusting technologies for fairness? Some people suggest it could be blockchain. Blockchain, the underpinning uh, technology for Bitcoin, where you had an immutability in a transaction, and it's appended forever and ever and ever on a, on a chain. Is that the promise? of the future, because one suggests that it could be transparent. What about, for example, self-driving cars? Where is your identity? What about, for example, the smart home? 
my toaster, talks to my refrigerator, talks to this wonderful as assistant that talks to my television, that talks to everybody, every object, and it is no longer the internet of things, it's the identity of things. Are you in control? So, when we take a step back, because we think about our identity, and we think about it every day, we must ask ourselves, by what method? By what method? And whether or not we are in control. Take a look at your card. Does that card define you? Does the source of that card define you? Ladies and gentlemen, I leave you with this. Let us create the world we want to have together, not the one we want to avoid. Take our identities back to save humanity.